start letting people in now. All right, sounds good. Lead Xers, my screen is coming through. You see it? All right, awesome. Nice. We see the early, uh, the on time folks, not even early, on time folks uh, coming in, which is so good. Let me move my chat window to the side. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Good to see you, Megan. Hey, Trisha, I see you're just logging in there, your audio and everything. Trish, nice to see you. Diane, so many cool friends from last year starting off strong. Matthew, always good to see you. Loving the awesome. energy. I love this. I love this. We're going to show all the new folks that have come in over the holidays um, how to do it. So I, I, I need all of you, uh, all you veterans to show them that if you're able, we like to leave our cameras on. It's just so much better to uh, present seeing everybody's smiling faces. If you're a Zoom pro, then you can click those three dots next to your name and modify your name so that we know your name, but also the organization you're with. Always good to uh, to know that, to put some context uh, to it. Um, veterans, if you're logging in, show everyone how to do it. Uh, new joiners, welcome. Happy New Year. Cassandra, Happy New Year. Matthew, loving this focus on excellence. Um, warm up your fingers also while we're waiting for everyone to log in. I got two questions. So what's your New Year's resolution or maybe theme for the year, if you have one? Bonus question. Does anyone know how many Grand Slam breakfasts does Denny serve each year? Now, two of you can't play. Two of you can't answer. The I rest love it. <laughs> you can't do chat GBT. You can't Google it. Take a wild guess how many Grand Slam breakfasts does Denny's serve each year? We, can we, Kevin, also ask how many we have served over the 70 years? Ooh, that's going to be a much, much bigger number. Now, we'll, we'll do this just for fun, but maybe the person who guesses the closest will get a Leadex swag box with a nice, uh, nice travel mug and journal and book and things like that. So... Now we get to see people are playing now that there's something on the line and more than just bragging rights. Michael's Brag. got 8.4 million, Cassie 9.6 million, Jenny 6 million. And I love the, um, the, the key words. I, let's see, two years ago, uh, equanimity was my word because I was freaking out and I had to get some equanimity. And then last year I wanted a health kick. So discipline was my word. This year I'm cheating. I got two words, do less. <laughs> do less yes i'm gonna be a slacker this year <laughs> at least take it down from a, a 12 to a 10 that's my version of slacking jenny that's mine too do less all right twin jenny we're gonna do less we'll be accountability partners i would follow up with you every week but that'd be doing too much so i'm just gonna ignore you and practice doing less Genevieve, 12 million. Nikki's theme is wisdom. I'm loving this. I am loving this. Me too. <laughs> by the way, by the way, this music, in honor of our guests, it, the song's called Breakfast at Denny's by Buckshot LaFonk. Now, maybe none of us have ever heard of Buckshot LaFonk. That's actually the name of a band that Branford Marsalis put together for a couple of years. And when I was searching on Spotify, for songs to go along with Denny's, I was shocked. There are many, many songs, including many, many explicit songs, by the way, <laughs> about Denny's or things that have taken place in a Denny's <laughs> or driving by a Denny's. It was amazing, but um, I thought this song was was great. Krisha, I'm with you. Talk about Denny's and we're just gonna um, make me hungry. Uh, if I'm ever on death row and um, have that final meal, it's going to be the Denny's hash browns, just plates and plates. Love Denny's, it. Right? It's, <laughs> oh, it's my best. goodness. It was our, going to breakfast at Denny's at 11, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2 a.m. All through high school and college. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those those 2 a.m. runs, right? Yeah, those 2 a.m. runs. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Good day. I love it. I love it. All right. So. Let me go into um, sort of official mode here. In fact, I'm going to um, uh, pause our breakfast at Denny's. And uh, again, welcome back to everyone. Happy New Year. 
Um, I'm Kevin Cruz, founder of LeadX. If you're a new joiner, if it's the first time, it's great to meet you. I know we had a lot of new signups in the month of December. This is our leadership development community of practice. It's an invite only group for practitioners. There's no coaches, consultants, other vendors. We stay out of the breakout rooms. We don't do sales pitches in here. If you happen to be a coach, a consultant, or a vendor and got the link somehow, um, welcome. And um, let's talk one-on-one after the event about how we might work together outside of this forum. And um, usually I've got my uh, my co-host, Dwayne Best, the, the much more, uh, the much smarter, more more handsome host of the two, but he is um, working a day on the road. And so I'm flying uh, solo today. Friendly reminder, we're in our new one hour format. So it's a little bit tighter. We're still gonna do that one uh, networking breakout, but the focus is gonna be on the Better Together program that Denny's put uh, together. And we uh, will be introducing our guests in just a minute. Um, also friendly reminder, that in addition to this monthly forum and the community of practice, we try to offer a lot of different resources for you to um, support the great work you're doing. We've got Innovating Leadership and Culture Magazine. We um, have two issues out, working on the third now. Uh, the Culture Code Podcast, which we launched separate from the LeadX Leadership Podcast late last year. I think we've got 40 or 50 chief people officers and leadership development experts that we've already interviewed. So lots of great case studies if you prefer to listen rather than to, to read. And you know we've launched um, resources for you. Uh, the first one being the, the free full workshop for SL2, which many of you will be participating in at the end of this month. Many others are on the wait list if we do it again. And the idea is to let you go through the full SL2 program with all the materials as a participant so that you can then see, is this something that your managers would benefit from uh, in the in the future? And so we've got SL2 to launch the year. Um, we haven't put it together yet, but we've got a really cool uh, emotional intelligence workshop coming you know, for the end of the, the, the second quarter to go along with our new assessment. Um, and you know, we're always looking to do more Forbes interviews and uh, um, interviews highlighting your good work. What we're about at LeadX, and therefore, you know, we try to evangelize here in this form and other places, is sort of a shift in thinking when it comes to leadership development from one-time events, not that those in themselves are bad, but to also do continuous in the flow of work. So that you move from, I don't have time to show up and participate to 80 to 100% participation rates from one size fits all to personalized. It's easier ever. Um, it's, it's easier now more than ever before because of AI. So instead of it doesn't apply to me or what's in it for me, you're maximizing their attention because it's completely about them. Moving from a learning focus to a behavior change focus, we overcome the knowing doing gap with the formation of habits. Instead of supporting just a few with multi-thousand dollar budgets per head, you take that budget and you can impact the entire organization. Let's make everyone a leader. And from measuring just activity, well, that's a start, but let's measure outcomes. So we can actually show your senior leadership that there's higher levels of engagement, higher levels of sales, higher levels of resilience, reduced turnover. So if you have a project that touches in one of these areas, and I haven't already interviewed you and put the spotlight on you and your team in Forbes or on the podcast, reach out to us because we are looking for case studies that demonstrate this sort of new approach to leadership development. Yeah, Evan Watkins is here. He's our head of community and content. So shoot Evan a note uh, or, or, or myself. Um, for any of this stuff, the uh, the magazines and the, and the wait lists and all the rest. So on that oh, note, we, oh, did I hear a, thought I heard something there. I don't know, uh, stray sound there. But this sets us up to our case for the day. Um, it is my pleasure. This was so fun. Um, I'm not even sure how I was first introduced uh, to the great team at Denny's, but um, I was able to find out about some of the great work they were doing 
got to know them, interviewed them, uh, put them into Forbes to share that casework, and I'm delighted to have them with us today. We have the Vice President of HR and Chief Learning Officer, Fasika Malaku-Peterson, and the Director of Leadership, Learning, and Culture, Rayela Rowan Isalo. And Fasika and Rayela, welcome. Thanks for joining us. We're excited to have you here today. And Happy New Year, officially. That's right. Happy New Year, right? <laughs> now, listen, I, I have to bore everyone with a Denny's story, actually. If I wasn't already um, selling Denny's for you, this is a true story. Okay. Two weeks ago, so I took the family between Christmas and New Year's to Sedona, Arizona. Anyone been in Sedona? Hit me in the chat. How nice is that, right? Don't oh. normally do that. We were in this very nice, fancy, bougie resort called Enchantment. Had a great week, did all kinds of crazy things. But it was the morning we had to leave. We had to get up at 6 a.m., drive to Phoenix to visit my parents, their grandparents. And so people, it was early in the morning. They were cranky. They were hungry. And I said, we'll just get 30 minutes on the road. We'll stop somewhere and eat on the way. Well, you're in the middle of the desert of Arizona, driving from, from Sedona to Phoenix. Everyone's getting hungry. We can't find a place. I see a sign for a random diner. It was called Road Runner Diner. Good. We'll go there. It was horrific. We actually walked out and now everyone's cranky and hungry and mad that I took them to this horrible Roadrunner diner. We actually just walked out and then I'm mad and I'm saying, all right, everyone, as we're driving back onto the highway, if one of you back there, there's like seven of us, so it's like a big whole pack. If one of you can find, think of a, of a restaurant where you'll all eat it that exists in Arizona that We'll make it happy. I'll stick it in the GPS and go there. And as I pull on the highway, the very next sign says, Denny's next exit. <laughs> and we went in there. It saved the day. <laughs> the wonderful man who took our order, we were the worst table in the world. We, we come into Denny's and every single one of my kids is ordering off the menu. I'm vegan because of, so I want this. I'm vegetarian. I want this, blah, blah. I was horrified. He every just said, no problem. I got gotcha. you. I can fix it. I can do it. He went around the table. Everyone had a custom order except me. We're in a Denny's. They're ordering off menu and he's not writing it down. And I'm like, do you need to write this down? You need to get a weight pad. And he says, no, no, I got it. And he did. He came back with a smile. Everyone's custom order was amazing. And then I tried to make him quit Denny's. I said, friend, you should be working at NASA or SpaceX. Yeah. Like the fact yeah. that you do that in your head, like yeah. you got to put men on Mars, people on Mars or something like that. <laughs> he said he was delighted. He loves Denny's. He It's a gift for him and he gave us a gift. So thank you, Denny's, for saving the last day of our, our vacation. <laughs> I so can't you're tell you. Mark. Right, right, Ryla. So let me just say, between that, the music, the way you opened it up, I had no, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an Xer. Is that such a thing? Lead Xer? Is that a lead X? Um, can I be an Xer? Can I be? Hey, hey, right? you're an Xer, and now huh? you've just given us all a cool name. We're all now Xers. I like that. I mean, like, I'm with you. I'm. I'm can I we be pe peeps? Can we be peeps? So <laughs> I can't even um, with everything you talked about um, the shifts, and um, particularly right now, as organizations are facing challenges. I mean, today money is expensive. Yeah, that's right. 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 It's expensive. And so more than ever, it's so beautiful to see the shift from one off engagements to right a leader of you to everyone has that opportunity to be and to be seen. It's just beautiful. So I'm pause for a second. <laughs> and Fasika, I want to let's start. So, you know, I just launched right into Denny's because it's such a known love brand. My story is one story. Everybody's got a, a Denny's mm -hmm. story. We saw it mm -hmm. in, in the comments. But let's set some context for for, mm -hmm. for the folks. So where's Denny's headquarters? Remind everyone. Sure. Denny's headquarters right now is in Spartanburg. That's our main headquarters. We did open up a couple of years ago, a regional headquarters in Dallas. But Spartanburg, South Carolina, come visit. Absolutely. My son goes to Clemson just down the road. So look at that. We got, hey, he'll be looking for an internship, by the way, soon. I'll come hit you up for that. And yeah. roughly... How many restaurants we got, you know, out there? It's big. Right under 1,600. Um, and what I'm talking about specifically right now is global, right? So we are yep. global. So 1,600 is where we play. Um, at any given moment, 
you know, in and out. My team also does uh, new restaurant openings. So you never know when one's popping up. We've got several in play right now. Uh, so 1,600. Over 60,000 employees, I think over yes. 65,000 employees. So massive organization. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm going to get to the, the, the bonus question. I don't know if you're going to know this. So total breakfast is annually 400 million breakfasts annually, 400 million breakfasts. But now I only have what I saw off your website. Is this going to be true? 12 and a half million Grand Slam breakfasts. Will that be our official answer? That's it. All right. 12 and a half million. So Evan, I don't know. You'll have to scroll back and see unless someone says like, hey, that's me. I'm the I'm the winner. I don't know who got close enough to 12 and a half million. I'll find raise it. your hand or something because we want to send you a little uh, little swag box to yeah, uh, we will too i love it we'll, I love we that. will too yeah thank you we'll send you a gift card nice so let's get into it i what what caught my attention i can't remember where i first saw it is when i heard about um obviously dei deib hot topic especially the last several years lots of people doing different approaches and somewhere i saw that you were doing this challenge with a challenge calendar. And of course, LeadX, we're all about the get people to do things, not just learn to like do things and apply and integrate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, have a platform that does a digital approach and you're a great case saying, look, that's cool, but you don't need fancy technology to run a challenge, to help people form habits, to take a coach approach. And that's when I reached out and we got into all the details. So, um, I know you have some slides, right? Do you want to present um, sort of an overview of the program? I might hit you with some questions because I'm rude like that. You know oh, me. No, uh, along we the need way. that. And yeah. then everyone can just type your questions in along the way, and we'll make sure there's there's room at the end if people want to, you know, raise their hand and come on camera as well. How's that sound? I love that. Rylo, are you good? I'm going to stop Rylo? my share. Yeah. So okay. what I will do, I'm going to share my screen. And share the sound is there as well. So this is where we're gonna start. Here we go. Beautiful. Everybody sees. Beautiful. Let's and uh, Ryla, all I'll say, and Ryla will get us started, is Kevin, I think that what is so beautiful about this opportunity and what you guys have created is, is the chance for ebb and flow and the chance for conversation. Because I think that's where beauty happens. Um, we can send slides. We're very open. We think um, growth and um, excellence is contagious and conversations. And so if we give, you give. And we love that. So I think um, I love getting to the point where you ask questions, where the community asks questions, and we engage. So though Ryla may set us up and, you know, um, she and I may go back and forth, that's where I think the heart is. Love it. Okay. Shall we? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, so yes. me and Masika is going to be ebb and flow. And there's going to be one three-minute video. Okay. Do you want to start, Masika, what together is? Sure. Um, so I'll, I'll say this together came about because um, our CEO at the time had this vision of saying, listen, is there ever a point in time we can create a place where we all belong, where we can um, engage, where we can feel together, where we can create true unity, even in the face of complexity or in the face of difference? Right. Um, Ryla and I are different. I come from Ethiopia. Um, uh, you know, she does not. Uh, yet we love the work we do. Um, and so that's really where it came about. It also was this dare to say, hey, let's he literally came to us and said, let's create an event. And, you know, we said no. Because I think we all know events don't happen. And um, they don't they don't uh, they don't create lasting evolution or change or sustainment. And so from there, we turned it into an experience. Um, and we knew that the experience had to have some policy. Um, and, you know, I'll let Ryla if she wants to engage in that, but we do have some policy. You got to help people understand this is just what we do. This is why we do it and make it nice and clean. Otherwise, they'll tiptoe around. Um, so that's kind of the heart that we have. But then what really uh, what we were so excited about is this idea of going beyond, going beyond our current understanding of what it is and what those experiences that shaped us. We know that uh, change can't take place unless you have time to just sit in it. 
Yeah. Right. And experience in it. And so that's where this idea of exploration of challenge came from. And the 30 days approach of uh, the thinking, uh, we then um, coupled that with bold conversations. And then this idea of champion, it, it, it's shared here today as champion humanity, as champion inclusion, but we've actually extended it to champion humanity. So it's this whole inclusive kind of opportunity for us to engage as people, connect, uh, build bridges and pause. So I'm going to pause here. Ryla, what would you understand? What would you share with what this really, how this came to be? And then we can hone in on the 30 days. Yeah. Like you said, these one-time events, whether it's, um, you know, um, unconscious bias training, they, they just don't work, do they? I mean, we, we've been doing it for years and years. And what are the results? So our approach is really an invitation to join. So this is not a must. This is a must for leaders because what leaders do during these 30 days is facilitate conversations in their team meetings. So I can actually show you the workbook. Here's the workbook and everybody gets this. And there's these challenges. We've got the weekly themes and you showed this already, Kevin. And this is where we started. And mm -hmm. our first Go Beyond Challenge in 2022 was, um, it was about inclusion and it was about belonging. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, do you want to continue to see you know, and and well, here's what I'll add to this. Um, it, there was intentionality created in this experience, right? And so when you think about each week was building on an opportunity for us to get to the fact that we have uh, an ownership to the experiences we have and what we bring to the table and connections that we have with others, really genuine connections that we have with others. Um, this idea of a place for all. And, and you'll see some words that we've taken personal opportunities to expand. So micro affirmations, right? That's not something that you see every day, but that's something that we thought lends itself to really pausing to dig deep in some of these components where you think allyship, allyship is huge, right? And, and helping people understand the, the, the abundance that they can create, the support they can create with others. So what I would say here is it was kind of a, a, a mosaic of beauty, right? To say, how do we put it all together to um, help people dig in, to pause, reflect, and potentially have some aha moments where they build bridges with people they wouldn't have coffee with. As community events we organize. So we did one in the middle of the challenge and we love food, as you might guess. So we always get together with some great food and conversation. And to facilitate those conversations, we have these conversation cards. You're going to see them in the video. So we want to be not too instructional, but instructional so that we invite people to discuss these specific topics and reflect and share their experiences. And like Fasika said, kind of build these empathy bridges. So, you know, bringing diverse groups together in these table teams, it's just this kind of collaborative learning space. I think we we successfully created and it's taken hold so it's kind of uh people expect it so this spring people would come to me and come to Fasik and they're asking so when are we doing this again so we have and here we go this was go beyond 2023 um empowered well-being so you see a slight deviation from what we talked about, but almost a build out. And this happened organically, right? We get new CEO in the middle of this. If you can imagine the CEO comes in. And by the way, when we started this, uh, our CEO asking for an event, asking for a training session that could be potentially best in class that he could gift as he is exiting his um, legacy as CEO for restaurant organizations. This was John Miller at the time. And we said, uh, okay, but guess what? We're going to do this for three years. So we entered a three-year challenge 
Um, and, you know, at that moment, so proud of the CFO that was there and uh, the CEO, because, and, and this was at a time, I don't know if you guys know, but Denny's bought a brand. We're now a portfolio company. We bought Kiki's. The same time, our organization, right? Nobody knew this yet. We hadn't announced it yet. We're working on a deal. At the same time, we're telling our CFO and CEO, we're going to do this and we're going to do this for three years. And by the way, you, every manager in the, in the uh, support center, everyone in the support center is going to, you know, go through this experience. And they said, okay, and how can we help? And can we gift and can we do something else? And, and can we do? And I think that is so huge. So see a new CEO comes in. It was her name was Kelly Valade. And she asked, how does uh, all this good work you're doing on DNI and belonging? How does well-being sit in this? And guess what? I was we were both. I asked Thoraila, how do we went out and talked to Gardner? We talked to so many people out there, experts, to say, where's the intersection of well-being and a DNI? What does that look like? Is what we're doing today right? And that's why you saw the, the connection uh, together of some areas that help create belonging. And here's what we think. And, you know, what we, after so much data and so much, um, uh, so many conversations with folks, we believe that can you truly create an environment of inclusion without having well people? I can, you know, can I truly come in and have the space and have these conversations with Evan where I am sharing uh, how I feel and what I do? And can that space be done without Evan being well? just freeze. Did I freeze? Exactly. Okay. For a little bit. Oops. Uh -oh. Sorry. I'm Hopefully sorry. it was a good free space. I mean, those B spaces are kind of <laughs> tough. <laughs> so we, I put this slide together because I'm thinking like, so what made this successful? So definitely visible leadership. You know, our, our leaders are very visible. They're out there. We always ask them to lead the way, and they do. Um, like I said, we delivered the workbook. It's something concrete that you have. You don't have to, you know, we'll give people a break from looking at the screen. And it's nice, you know, you can carry it with you. Our leaders are expected to lead these challenges. Um, our DI council and our business resource groups were another kind of avenue that we worked with so that they could take the lead. And then we have a cool social circle, which is called Denny Circle. And we saw an uptick of participation in this social uh, circle, like a really major. So people started like joining joining in and sharing their experiences. And some of them, especially this well-being, empowered well-being challenge this summer or last summer, there were some really heartfelt um, posts, very, very personal posts. And of course, the weekly email communications. And like I already said, we really know how to put up a good party and celebrate, don't we? <laughs> Pancakes and food, that's right. Yeah. So I'm going to show you a video. I think that's a good way to share what actually happened. At Denny's, we take food and service further than any other diner in America. And we don't stop there. Our commitment to going beyond in everything we do extends deep into the core of who we are as a company. That's why we challenge ourselves to step further out and explore experiences, communities, and beliefs that exist outside of our daily lives. It's a challenge we are eager to take on because it's one we do together. In 2022, the Denny's family came together to begin a 30-day journey of discovery and growth. Here's what our employees had to say about the shared experience. Yeah, so the Go Beyond Challenge so far has been so much fun and so interesting. Just going through those exercises every single day and just realizing that, yes, there is a lot of inherent bias in the way that we think and approach the world. Yes, we can challenge ourselves to appreciate a different perspective and learn from one another. I mean, it just opens the conversation and allows us to think about things that, quite frankly, are kind of hard to think about in a day-to-day -day that's so busy and has so much going on. So the opportunity to pause think, 
and reflect on all these really critical issues that impact the way we work and who we work with, it's really phenomenal. I'm really appreciative of that opportunity. Week one, we began by creating a culture of belonging. So far, one week in, very happy I started it. And I hope everyone else is doing it as well. The program itself is impressive and it opens your mind to thoughts that you didn't know. I feel like this challenge is well needed, especially us being a new office here. You know, new employees can kind of help shape our culture that we want to build. So I'm excited. Week two. By the second week, we learned about biases and how it impacts our decision making. This is really the first time in my career that I've been able to experience a challenge like this. Um, the exercises that we have done so far have, have really taught me how to, to be a better person. You know, just when I thought I was being empathetic, I was more being sympathetic. So to really take what um, the challenges have offered and to apply that into our everyday life here. And we've got a long way to go, but I'm really excited to be a part of the challenge. <laughs> I mean, I think that's kind of the definition of go beyond, right, is is to get outside your comfort zone. And, and the program did a great job of setting us up to experience that journey in a, in a very safe way. You know, you, you always think, you know, oh, I know my blind spots or I don't have blind spots, but you go through that and you realize, yeah, there's there's probably some stuff I need to I need to start working on. And so it's it's great to be able to experience that and have that time to reflect and figure out how you can move on from that. Week three. We continue to explore how we can create a space of acceptance and inclusion for all. When I joined the company nine years ago, I feel uh, I was my own enemy. I, I was super shy. I was so, so insecure uh, because of English wasn't my, my first language. So over time, um, I, I thanks to the you know to the people that work with me, uh, I was able to get out of the shell and, and become who I am. Week four. We went all in to empower individuals to become lifelong allies of education, empowerment, and to take part in the elevation of our people. Today, we had our Go Beyond Challenge finale. We had an incredible food truck here and a bunch of really great conversations happening in the room. So it was, it was nice to get back together and kind of discuss what had happened during that Go Beyond Challenge. I think what I kind of learned from this Go Beyond Challenge was giving a little bit more grace to people. We work in a very fast-paced environment. You're constantly on the go, constantly having things in our heads, running a million miles an hour. And so being able to give grace to others and to myself, I think was a big learning that I took away. As our journey continues, we look onward to accomplishments on the horizon and step onto that beyond with courage because we do it together. There. Sorry, I jumped to the next one. I don't know if I can pause it. So that's what it looked like. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if there's any questions that we have. Certainly you can go through survey results and, you know, our team members did speak. There's some data that we have that showed how connected, but I think the words uh, from the very teams that uh, went through this, I think, speak for themselves, right? When you think about what okay. that looks like, Kevin. Yeah, no, great. Well, great results. And um, yes, let's uh, I encourage everyone to either type your question into the chat or raise your digital hand and we'll uh, bring you on camera and, and and take those first. And as people are thinking about that, I I mean, I was taking notes again in so many ways. So first of all, this sharing this case, it's just inspirational for what you're doing DEI wise, the the overall approach. But I'm always hoping that people can get like every organization's different we're all in different places but where can people steal ideas and you gave so many you know stealable <laughs> uh, uh things w one of the things that i love it's like even just this idea of conversation starters like these little activities my experience over 30 years is people love those conversation starters managers love them how to start talking to individuals about their career. That was another case study, you know, one of our members uh, presented and we could do that in almost every kind of program. You talked about a midpoint celebration. Um, for those of you who were remembered, Michelle from Olympus was talking about their emerging leader program and some of the other cases, we're hearing more and more where people are asking for like a recommit from participants 
halfway through. Sure, you thought you knew what you were signing up for and we all kicked off and had all this energy. Now let's recommit at the halfway point. We can use that idea um, really with anything. This whole idea of getting a three-year commitment is mind-blowing. I know uh, we see it from the benchmark study. We're crunching the data right now. People are saying, yes, we have support from our senior leadership. And they're all saying they've got not enough headcount and budget. <laughs> so something's not lining up and you're, you're able to get that kind of support. I might've even uh, spotted your CEO, Kelly, in that video, I think in, in one of those. So, yeah. so many cool ideas that we can take. Um, does anyone want to come on camera with their question, Evan? I don't know if I'm missing any hands. Otherwise, let's start with, uh, I'm going to summarize a couple of things. Well, let's go to, I see Dr. Mike. All right, here we go. Dr. Mike, yeah, I, I, I put it in the chat, but I'm also curious um, from a content creation perspective, do you have enough subject matter expertise in-house that you are creating your own content or did you outsource to anybody in particular? We did have, we do have enough subject matter um, experts, I think in between, um, Ryla and I, there was a young lady that was here before we started with Ryla. Listen, we've been at this for some time. Um, so we have enough. What we do do, though, is bring outside editors in, right? Because we love our own work. <laughs> we we fall in love with what we say and what we do. And sometimes an outside perspective is really good to make sure this is something that can be relatable to all stakeholders. So because I'll tell you, um, this was not just for managers or team members. This was for executives. And this year we're taking it to owners, franchise owners. Yeah. Fasika, build on that because there were several sure. questions about, you know, how many managers did this go to, et cetera. I know you're rolling out, you have a multi-year approach to, to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the impact. So tell us mm -hmm. more about that, how you're rolling it out. Absolutely. So the first thing we had to do is make sure um, that that our internal stakeholders, right, um, could navigate through this. And 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 let me tell you, Denny's has been working on DEI and I for a long time, and you guys know why. Everybody, I think, knows the Denny story and knows why we had to. At one point, it was dictated that we had to, and so we've really had intentional focus. You, our chairman of the board is an African American woman. If you look at the numbers. We've got them, yet we have our own issue, internal issue. And at that point, we were facing some hard facts between the haves and have nots, even in the race area within the Denny support system. So if you think of our Denny's um, support center uh, here, here in Spartanburg and Dallas, we have um, about 600, right? When you start getting into the network of franchisees, it starts adding up. And then of course, in our team members, this year, we're taking this ethos into our restaurants and into our franchisees, our multi-unit managers for the franchise community. Um, um, so this went to about 600 first. We did that to test the waters. Listen, it is really hard when you talk about biases. People start looking. They're like, oh, my gosh, I don't. You know, yeah. they start, and, and, right. And, 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 and that's why our approach is really compassionate curiosity. So we're not pointing fingers and we're not telling people that they're bad people because everybody has biases. You know, that's how our brains work, right? But it is an invitation to do better and, and to form these connections and, and increase your self-awareness and see, kind of understand where, what are those moments where biases can wreak havoc? I mean, it's people decisions, right? It's meetings. Are your meeting practices really inclusive or do you think they just are inclusive? Yeah. Krisha, you had a question. Yeah. Am I off mute? You are off mute. Good. Um, I think so. One of them was maybe I missed it. You said it and I missed it. But what how what percentage was it all your management who went through this or kind of who was your target audience? And, you know, how everybody, did, did literally everyone, everyone oh, from every? the a, a executive. Right. So mm -hmm. and we were very intentional um, bringing them into the fold in advance. Yeah. What was going to happen? How, listen, get ready for uncomfortableness. It's OK. 
it is right and helping them through that to um, executive C-suite to vice president, senior directors, directors, managers, individual contributors, all the way to mailroom support, right? And this time it's going to be from dishwashers to food servers to cooks to multi-unit managers. So the whole the whole gamut. This time, but, but with these, these the numbers well, I'm everyone. looking at it was oh it was everyone. Yeah. Yeah, the only people that we didn't touch the last two years were servers and cooks. What servers and cooks knew, though, is what we call rules to live by, right? So remember I, earlier, I started kind of with this policy idea, right? Across the board, we have an umbrella that talks about how passionate we are about creating spaces that people feel heard, that kindness happens, that respect is understood in meaning as well as in tone, as well as in conversation, right? So that's across the board. Um, 2022 and 2023, we went to over 600 people. Now what we're doing is going to the Denny's, entire Denny's community. Nice. And there were a follow few- up, if that's okay. I noticed 23, you had in your, you know, your survey questions, a pretty good uptick in kind of you had great results in 2022 but in 2023 you had a nice uptick and I was it was just made me curious about do you know what you did differently that kind of created that or do you think it was the the longer commitment that it was starting to saturate I don't know just what's your thoughts about that I have some I have some um thoughts based on data and what I've seen right it's it's tough but let me tell you two things I think one the first content and we did this purposely was tough when you start talking about biases you know the second content was a little bit different it was about how we feel it was about it was a little bit different it was about resilience it was about navigating through that and and we did that intentionally because we're coming back this year to the first conversation we're coming back to that. We're going back to understand what that looks like. I believe that is the differential. The other thing is they're like, oh, they mean it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let me jump in here. We um, we could probably spend hours on the topic. I do want to get us in a minute to our first networking breakout. But let me uh, ask I, Raila, Fasika, both of you. A couple of questions were around, you know, Michael's asking like, what adjustments will you be making moving forward? Eileen was like, what's the, what was the biggest challenge in rolling it out? And so just, you know, what would you do differently or what would be your advice uh, if you could dial it back and, you know, say, hey, you guys should do this thing a little different or don't forget about this thing. What comes to mind? Hello, you want to take that first? (laughs) Ah, I mean, preparing our leaders for these conversations. So you can see that, you know, we've got that 80% and it stayed at 80%. So our team members saw that 80% of our team members were fully on board. And I was hoping our plan, our challenge for our leaders was, of course, 100%. And we didn't get there. So um, that is something I I, want to see that 90-something or 100. What do you think, Vasika? I will tell you, Kevin, as I talked to the the, the board about this, um, the board challenged us to think differently about uh, making this consistent for everyone. So our approach, Rila said, was invite. They're like, no, 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 no. Um, let's bring them in. Let's make this part of the ethos at Denny's that we're going to go through this. And so that is a challenge I'm thinking about right now. I share it with all of you. If you have thoughts and how we should proceed, please let me know. Um, but that's too constructive, right? Ryla's passionate about invite and uh, experience, and our board is passionate about make this happen. They think it's it's important for the brand. Yeah, and um, if there was an easy answer, everyone would always be doing it one way, right, Vasika? But uh, this that's a hot button question for me. I mean, we we ask in the benchmark survey is leadership development mandatory in your organization? And I don't know what the numbers are this year, but like in most places it is not. And I sort of feel like, you know, geez, if you want to lead people, you have to get some training in it. I mean, it's sort of almost dangerous not to. The counter argument is just because you you try to force people to go through a program and they don't really want to be there, how much are they really going to get out of it? You'd really rather have people- volunteer and engage yeah. and participate and want to be there. It's it's very tough. Let us um, move on to our breakout session. Evan, I'm going to vamp to get ready. 
Um, and here's what's going to happen. Let me share this screen. Our conversation starter for this breakout, which is going to last for uh, about 10 minutes, Evan, is um, let's just play with this. We're off to the new year. We were talking about resolutions and other things. Just play with this question in your group. Introduce yourself, who you are, where you work, et cetera. How will your performance be judged at the end of Q1? What's the number one thing you're supposed to accomplish this quarter? Imagine it's the end of the quarter and your manager has called you and said, all right, how did Q1 go for you? Are we celebrating? Are we high-fiving? Or are we having a redirection, a realignment conversation? This is your chance to share what's important in your role with others and to hear what other people are going to be focused on. And who knows, maybe you'll you'll meet an accountability partner who's going to check in on you uh, over the next few weeks to make sure you are still on track. And talk about priorities for the very first quarter of the year. And, um, you know, we like to treat this as like a group mastermind. So, you know, just type in the chat, like what's one priority that you shared or that someone uh, shared with you in the group? Um, it's always interesting uh, to, to see. Um, hey, Megan, giving a shout out to the Culture Code podcast. Thank you for that. We're on a short holiday with that, but we're going we're gonna to line up the second uh, drop soon. Amy, networking to find your next opportunity. Amy, this is a great place to network, of course. Um, measures of success and goals, Genevieve. It's great. How to measure success of L&D work. Yeah, Christopher McCormick. Absolutely. Good to see you, Christopher. Um, lots of launches, right? So we, we're releasing that benchmark study, and that was the number one thing for this year is new programs. Uh, attention to high potential, hypos. Career management, career growth, and coaching. Thank you, Kristen. Yeah, these are great things. And um, let's, uh, I always feel like, I mean, I once wrote a book about goal setting. So the more specific, the better. We always have a million things we need to do, right? To kind of keep our job. I like to think about the most important task is what is the thing that's going to get us the promotion or the max out bonus or the next job even, you know, whatever that might be. So there's like, the regular stuff, but what's that one thing that'll go to the next level? And then if there's a way we can carve out five minutes or 30 minutes in a day at the beginning part of our day to work on it, it works uh, like magic. Um, Raela, I want to say thank you. Fasika, I'm, I'm missing you on, uh, on all of my Brady Bunch squares here. Big thanks for sharing the case study. It was It, it lit up the chat room and uh, I think inspired everyone. Thanks for that time. And um, Evan, remind us, when is the benchmark survey going to be released? I won't hold you to it, but... It should be early February. So we got about three weeks from now. Yeah, yeah, we're in we're, rapid writing drafting mode right now. Yeah, over 150 um, of, of you and your peers answered the benchmark survey. So we're going to be giving that to you soon. Average budgets per head. Um, newsflash went down a lot <laughs> head count top priorities top challenges um we added for the first time questions you gave us to ask use of ai things like that so it's going to be um, really fun to dive into that over the next uh, couple of months so for now thank you again everyone it's been a pleasure we will see those of you participating in the benchmark we'll see you next month have a great quarter hope you hit those goals